Parenting teenagers can be so tricky. They can test us, challenge us, provoke us, and sometimes they're just completely obnoxious. But we have to remember that adolescence is very tricky and turbulent time for them too. In this video, I'm gonna share some insights into why teenagers often don't seem to listen to us as parents and what you can do to open up a line of communication with them. So let's get started. You know, it's frustrating when our kids don't listen to us. This might happen for a variety of reasons. Here's one reason you should consider. Let me talk to you about the idea of an emotional bank account. And I think this idea first started with Stephen Covey, at least that's who I first heard this idea from. But I love the concept and I want to share with you a story that happened early in my career as a therapist. And this will illustrate what I mean by an emotional bank account. I saw this woman in therapy. She, she came in with her son and this boy was absolutely out of control. He had very severe behavior problems. And he let me know basically the minute he walked into my office that he would never be coming back. And he didn't, he never came back. But his mom, we'll call her Claire, she decided that she would keep coming back. And so I ended up seeing Claire for a long time and I ended up developing this really neat relationship with Claire. But early on, as Claire began talking with me, she started sharing with me about some of the traumas that she had in her life. And these had been happening like throughout her whole life. She had many, many, she was the most traumatized person I had ever seen in my life at that point. And these traumas started when she was very young and they occurred throughout her entire life. Now, let me tell you about Claire. I really cared about Claire. And I remember at first when she's talking to me, how fragile she was. There were many times in those first few therapy sessions where she could not say anything to me. She's trying to get the words out, but she could hardly talk about these painful experiences. There would often be ridiculously long periods of silence. I'm talking 20 minutes straight of me sitting forward, looking at her and not saying anything. And I'm knowing that she's struggling. She's trying to get this out but she can't. Often early on, I was just trying to be with her. I was just, my initial goal really, I just wanted to do anything I could to connect with Claire and to let her know that she could trust me, that I was a safe space for her, that it would be okay for her to open up and share these things. In fact, that really was my whole goal initially, was just to be a safe space so that she could start talking about these painful things whenever she was ready to do it. Well, it took a long time and it took many sessions of this, but our relationship eventually got to the point where she could be very open with me about horrible subjects, horrible things that happened to her. Over time, I had been building up this emotional bank account with her and I made these deposits into her emotional bank account by listening to her and not judging her and empathizing with her and creating this safe space and being attentive to her. These were all my investments into her emotional bank account. Well, eventually I'd made so many deposits into the bank account that I could start making withdrawals. And what that meant was I had to say some really hard things to Claire. These were things that were difficult for her to hear, but she needed to hear them. Only way I could get away with that was because she trusted me because we had, I had built up that emotional bank account. So let's compare this with our kids. When our kids aren't listening to us, we have to try to find ways to increase our connection with them, find ways to make deposits into their emotional bank account. Now this, usually comes in the form of listening or spending time together, but that time together has to be without an agenda. Once you've got the account built up, now you're much more likely to be listened to. This is because you now have a relationship that gives you influence. So remember, if your kids aren't listening, perhaps you can find a way to increase your connection with them. My oldest daughter recently shared the following story with me about her little two-year-old. He was acting out one day. He was just doing all sorts of naughty stuff. And it would have been really easy for her to scold him or to put him in a timeout or any other number of things that she could do with a naughty little two-year-old. But instead, she told me she sat down with him and read him a story. And that changed everything in that moment. He wanted attention and the story time was this little emotional bonding moment that altered the course of his behaviors. Now, before we move on to the next points, I wanna thank you for watching this video. 
Do you struggle in communicating with your children or disciplining them effectively? You know, none of us are given a manual when our kids are born. So we, we have to kind of figure out by trial and error what to do. And that's what this channel is about. It's about using my system of correcting and connecting to help you build a strong, trusting and influential relationship with your child. If that's the kind of thing you want to know about, then like the video and subscribe to my channel and then share this with all of your friends. Now let's get back to the video. I remember one time with my son, this was a few years ago, he had been irritable, grouchy. He was sort of out of sorts. He was distant and we couldn't figure out what was going on with him. Well, he had recently hurt himself. He had uh, broken a rib and bruised a knee and scraped himself up after a fall. And he also ruined his cell phone, but he got it wet. Well, anyways, so maybe that's what was going on. Maybe it was because he was hurting and his phone was not working. I, I don't know. But as a side note, it was July. And July for me is the absolute busiest month of my year. My Julys are insane. And I'm gone a lot in July. And at the time, I had been gone a lot and I had not been very available to him. And also because of his broken rib, I couldn't do the usual thing I do with him, which we go into the mountains on dirt bikes and we spend time together, but he couldn't do that because he had been hurt. So we didn't have our normal way of connecting. That normally works every time for us. Well, it was also during the pandemic when this happened. Normally we love to go to movies. He couldn't do that either because the movie theaters were shut down. I literally could not think of anything significant to do with him. And I was kind of bummed out about it. Well, I'll tell you, later in the morning, he was going to the gym. He had to do some exercises that his physical therapist had prescribed him. And I had to go do some errands. And so I just decided, well, I'll just go to the gym with him. And he was really glad to hear that I was gonna to come to the gym with him. So we go to the gym and he says to me that he just wants to work out somewhere near me. So we do that and then we leave the gym and I say, hey, I've got to run some, one more errand, why don't you come with me? So he comes with me, he's kind of happy to do that. And so while we're doing that, he then says, hey, you know, dad, do you think we can go to lunch? It's lunchtime. So we do, we go to lunch. Then when we get home, it's summer, we have a pool, we decide to take a quick swim together and that lasted for about an hour, maybe not even an hour. All of a sudden, his mood is noticeably brightened. He's smiling, he's telling jokes, he kind of seems like his old self. The reason I share this silly little story with you is to me, it just illustrates the power of finding little moments of connection. You know, we didn't do anything major. We didn't go on a vacation or anything major like that. We just did kind of these small little things together. And I can't tell you how much more settled he felt to me. He was open and talking and listening to me. You know, sometimes we kind of have to go about things backwards. If our kids aren't listening to us and it's frustrating to us, maybe we need to spend some time listening to them and connecting with them. Are you looking for a more effective way to connect with your child and build long-term positive influence? Maybe your child's misbehaving or going through a difficult phase and you just struggle knowing what to do or, or how to discipline or even just how to reach them. My name is Dr. Todd Corelli and I have spent the last 25 years as a clinical psychologist. I have worked with thousands and thousands of families around the world. I have seen the challenges facing families and that's why I've created a four part video series that is completely free to watch and it's available for you to view it immediately. This will help parents become much more effective at bonding with and positively influencing their children. The system I've created is completely unique. It's highly effective and it's been proven. I've seen this system benefit my own family and so many others, and I want your family to have this too. So just go to the link in the video description below or go to correctandconnect.com, enter your details, click the button, and I will send you immediate access. Thank you.